Hey, I'm Megan Scully, and this is the Limerick Post Show. We're here in the commercial, and I'm joined by singer Jane Fraser. How are you getting on? Very good, thank you. Now, the last time we met, it was in preparation for the Jazz Festival. Tell me, how did that go? Yeah, it was really great. Now, um, it was a fantastic festival this year, so there was just so many great artists that came from overseas, and artists, local artists as well. We did a gig here on the Sunday, and the place was packed um, with my jazz thing, Eve's Record Box, and... um, we did the Savoy as well on the Thursday night, which was lovely as well. So yeah, it was a nice festival. Got to see a few. I couldn't pets. actually make it here, but I, I seen the power of social media. I was watching different stories um, from the commercial, from from loads of different people. So you know, like, I kind of felt like I was there, and I was like, wow, it just looked so much fun. Yeah, it was. It was uh, every single year. It's just building and building and like getting better and better. So yeah, fair play to John Daly and all the crowd. On a stellar Limerick. Show. Yeah, they did now. They now, I have to say it's great, like the, the amount of musicians in Limerick, but the amount of different genres as well. And of course, mm-hmm. you're adding another element to this. Like we've spoken to rappers, we've had indie, we've had pop, jazz. I mean, a bit of everything. Like mm. You must think it must be an amazing time to be in Limerick. Yeah, it really is. Like I was, um, I lived away for a long time. So in 2007, I moved to London because at the time in Limerick, like there was just hardly any original music or mm. anything happening. So... And I really wanted to do it right and and do that kind of stuff. So I left. But once I've come back like three years ago now and the place is just (laughs) hopping with writers and we've grown real confidence, I think. It's become a real confidence in um, writing your own songs Mm -hmm. and doing your own thing and which really wasn't there when I left, like, you know. And speaking of writing your own songs, you're going to perform a song for us in a little while. But tell me about um, about some of your music and what you've written. Yeah, so... um, When I was away, I did a degree in songwriting. So um, during that time, I kind of started learning how to like produce a little bit and kind of messing around with music production software and trying to kind of find my sound. I'd always sang jazz and I'd always sang soul, but I was trying to experiment and break myself out of my comfort zone a bit. So I kind of started writing like unusual pop music Mm. and um, started really getting into that and at like using strange sounds and stuff so yeah I've I've started I've written a good few tunes now in that genre so I write them I do the demos as best as I can myself and then I'll send them off over to London there's a guy over there who taught me in school and he does the mixes for me and he makes them sound Brilliant. ready for radio you know um so yeah I put out my first one there a few weeks ago single my first single under this new kind of project name so yeah it's been going well enough undefined is the name of the track and it's had a couple of spins on radio so you know onwards and upwards just keep putting them out and enjoying it as well as you said though it's a great time because um people do want original music like and and people want to hear artists own songs now I think everyone's kind Mm. of not that everyone's stepping away from the commercialised stuff but everyone is loving like going into like the smaller venues and seeing someone who's like written this whole song produced it all and I think because there's so much more meaning to it yeah for sure it's just it's just interesting Mm. like to hear you know what's coming out of someone's kind of like mind and and soul (laughs) like you know you really get to know someone when you hear something that they've written I think and uh, speaking there about your your genre of music as well and and you said about writing a bit of pop as well who would be your kind of influences or what were you listening to growing up um well when I was growing up I was kind of in a mixture of stuff so I was listening to soul and I was listening to jazz but I was also listening to a lot of dance music okay interesting so yeah I was total like um naughty's dance store (laughs) chick so and then I started kind of listening to Bjork and Imogen Heap and Kate Bush and artists like that as well so yeah just I guess trying to blend things that I enjoy and things that sound good to my to my ear, you know. But you say there, like you, you kind of mix different sounds now, but you can also mix different, um, all, all sorts. Of, like a lot of artists nowadays, you see like a lot of crossovers and stuff. So, mm. if you were to kind of mix with uh, like one genre with with what you're doing right now, what would it be? Like, what do you think now would be kind of a bit mad, but actually would work? Um, well, I I guess I, I'm kind of hoping to um, mix the jazz stuff into the kind of electronic stuff. Yeah, that, that would be, be yeah. That's the kind of long-term aspiration, I think. That would be very cool. Yeah, it would be cool because both things... I love both 
So it'd be <laughs> nice to be able to marry them a little bit more. But you notice now, I find sometimes you go, well, it kind of started abroad, but it has come into Ireland now when you go into like late bars or clubs, they've started bringing in like instruments now. So yeah. the DJ's there going so and then like there's the like, yeah. Thing. yeah. And it's, it's glass. Like I just love, I think the sound is so good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's nice as well to have a, like a live element. Mm. Just, it just does bring something extra to when you see like a really good electronic artist and they're there and they're using their trigger pads and they're using their little toys and bits and pieces, you know. And then you've got like a live drummer, a live bass player, a guitar player playing along. It just it makes it really exciting to watch. Um, and there's that kind of like body language and conversation that happens between other people being on the stage mm. as well. Because um, I've done a few like gigs where it's just been me like and Ableton and like triggering sounds and stuff. And it can be really lonely. Like, <laughs> you know, as someone who's grown up in bands, it's such a different thing to do to just be on stage by yourself like you know with like all these pieces of technology trying to yeah create a vibe it's it's harder to do um and I'm very much at the beginning of that like I mean you see some fantastic people but like I'm very much at a very basic level at the moment so it would be really cool to like open it up into a band kind of thing where you've got like some electronic stuff going on yeah. and then other players coming in as well. Well I look forward to hearing this because I've no doubt it's going to happen. Yeah <laughs> yeah. What's the plan for the next couple of months? So I have a few more tracks there to, that are finished that I'll put out in the next few months and I've been kind of debating will I do an album or will I do like a couple of EPs but there is another release scheduled. F I need I need to kind of pick the date, but it, it, the, f the track is finished and ready. Brilliant. So that will be out in the next two months. And um, then beyond that, it's either do I do an EP or do I do, I do an album? So I'll have to decide after that. I think though nowadays it's kind of changed. Like you see the likes of Dermot Kennedy who you know brought yeah. out all these all these songs and then brought out the album then, kind of, everyone's like where's this album and then it came out and then you've got other artists who are just kind of dropping albums without yeah. even telling you so I think the way music is, is it's, it's the scene in that sense when it comes to mu um, albums and bringing out songs it's completely changed you can make your own rules a bit yeah more now. it's great isn't it in the past it was very like this very set format mm. and even when I was in like in uni and college over in London like they taught you a set format like to a release campaign etc and it was quite like this is how it's done. Whereas even only a few years on now, people are just doing their own thing and what suits them yeah. best. It's great though, isn't it? Yeah, like no, it is. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's a great time. Like, you know, there's, it's in some ways it's a tough time because there's a lot of things going on and it's hard to, to be seen and be heard. But in another way, it's good because you do have more autonomy over what you're doing. You can guide your own career. You can make money out of your own music yeah. if you're clever, you know, so... It yeah. is good. It's an exciting time. Now, Jane Fraser, where can we find you on social media? Um, so, J-A-Y-N-E <laughs> underscore music on Instagram and on Twitter and, um, yeah, on on Spotify as well. It's J-A-Y. The Y is like a yen sign. Oh, yeah. It's two lines here. J-A-Y-N-E. Cool. And my track is Undefined. Lovely stuff. And tell us about the song you're going to perform. Is it Undefined? It's or? this track, Undefined. Amazing. So, yeah, it went out last month and... Only a couple of weeks ago, to be honest, maybe like two, three weeks ago it went out. Lovely. So, yeah. Well, I'm I can't wait to hear it. All right. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> Thank you. Out of touch, I saw morning in your dawn. There was beauty in your land Out of time, keep on running till you're gone I am carved in blue, in black In the valley of every line that's drawn We're forever changed And 